So just like we would do with derivatives, if we were taking the derivative of 1 over x cubed, we would rewrite it, right? We would rewrite it as x to the negative third. Okay? Rewrite it, then apply the rule. Okay? We add 1 to the exponent, so that becomes negative 2. We divide by the new exponent and add c to the end. Now, we do want to fix that. What? Okay. Now, at this point is where I would check it. At this point, I would check it. I would take the derivative of this. Okay. I would take the derivative of this. Bring down my exponents. So that means I have negative 2 in the numerator. That cancels with the negative 2 in the denominator. And then subtract from the negative third. That becomes x to the negative third. That was my original function. Okay. That's my original function. So it's negative. Um, now, we don't leave it like that. Yes. No, you got to get the two in there. You got to get the two in there. So we want to rewrite that as move the negative to the numerator. The two stays. The x squared moves down, or the x the negative two moves down, so it is x to the positive two. Okay. So that's how that would be written. What? I could take the derivative of either one. And it should give me 1 over x cubed. If I take the derivative of this right here, the coefficient stays. I bring down the exponent. I subtract 1 from the exponent. That all cancels. It's just x to the negative third. Square root of x. Square root of x. We want to write that as a power. Okay, we want to write that as a power. Um, so, how do we write that as a power? x to the 1 half. Okay, it's in the numerator, so it's not negative 1 half, it's positive 1 half. All right? So, add 1 to your exponent. 1 half plus 1 is 3 halves. If y'all don't know that by memory by now, we're in trouble. Okay? If you don't know that 1 half plus 1 is 3 halves, like that, we, we got some work to do. <coughs> Divide by the new exponent, add c. Now, we want to fix this. We don't leave it like that. Okay, dividing by 3 halves, you flip it over, so that's 2 thirds. And sometimes they leave the exponent, sometimes they rewrite it as a square root again. Um, you just kind of got to look at the answer choices at that point. Okay, so that would be the square root of x cubed. Two-thirds times the square root of x cubed plus c. The plus c is not under the square root. Okay, it's not under the square root. It's outside the square root. It's always just stuck on the end. Well, yeah, it's like that example we just did a second ago. If they tell you, like f of 1 is 2, then you can plug that in to figure out c. But right now we're just doing general solutions. Okay, general solutions. Okay, let's do a trig one. Okay, let's do a trig one. Okay. Oh, yeah, college class. What day is it? What day is it? Just Monday to Wednesday. Okay. Alright. Okay. Alright. So, um, what I usually do, and I suggest doing this, if there is a constant right here, just put it in front of the integral. You can do that. That is a uh, legal procedure, so to speak, of integrals. Now, I'll show you when it comes up again. way that it is, we're okay. All right? Now, uh, what's the antiderivative of sine? Negative cosine. Because you got to think about, if I take the derivative of this, what's going to give me positive sine? So it is negative cosine, and I'm just going to slip that negative in front of the 2, okay? Because the derivative of cosine is negative sine, 
but I need positive sine. So it must have been negative cosine to begin with. Okay? <clears throat> um, all right. Let's look at uh, polynomials. Okay, let's look at polynomials. Okay, taking the antiderivative of polynomials. Now, that first little thing looks really, really weird. Okay, and it's not a typo. There is nothing there. Okay, but it's not that there's nothing there. Okay, in math, if there's quote unquote nothing there, what's there? So really that first one right there is the integral of 1 with respect to x. What is the x plus c? Okay. You got to make it taller. I'm skinnier. Taller and skinnier. Okay. Now. will help with future functions. Um, if we have to take the antiderivative of x plus 2, a rule um, says that when you're adding or subtracting things inside of an integral, you can split those up into separate integrals, just like with derivatives. Okay? But remember, just like with derivatives, if we're multiplying, there's the product rule. Okay, same thing with antiderivatives. If we were multiplying, it doesn't work the same way. Okay, you can't just take the integral of two times the integral of x. Okay, it's not the same thing. Um, <clears throat> but if you're adding and subtracting these combinations, you can split them into individual pieces. Now, here, do we really have to do that? future stuff. I wanted to go ahead and introduce that idea. Okay? So the antiderivative of x is x squared over 2, right? x squared over 2. Add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. I'm anti-differentiating x. x to the first. See ya. Add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. Okay? Plus the antiderivative of 2 is 2x plus c. Okay, again, real quick check. Take the derivative. Derivative of x squared over 2. 2 is stable, subtract 1, they give me x. 2x is 2, constant is Um, now, again, you don't necessarily have to do this, but I am going to do it for the sake of showing you some uh, properties here. I can rewrite this as 3 times the integral of x to the fourth dx minus 5 times the integral of x squared dx plus the integral of x dx. Notice each one of those has to get the dx. All right. Again, technically it's overkill right now. But this will be helpful later on. Do what? It's just like when we take the derivative of a polynomial, we're taking the derivative of each piece. When you integrate a polynomial, you're taking the integral of each piece. Okay, so add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. Add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. Add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. Stick a plus C on the end. Now, I'm not a particular fan of the way that looks, so I'm just going to rewrite it this way. Now, this one did not simplify, but sometimes they do simplify. Okay, so like that 3 over 5, if that had been 6, then you would want to simplify that to 1 half. Okay, but in this case, nothing simplified. 